Hello, Fall Compounders. Welcome back. Do you know the optimal order in which you should be allocating your new investment dollars? In what sequence should you be investing? In this video, I'll show you the order that I would use. This video is for educational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. I am not your financial advisor and you're responsible for your own financial decisions. When it comes to financial planning, deciding on how to allocate your money can be a challenging process. Your financial goals, risk tolerance, and timeline are among the many factors to consider. Still, certain strategies are typically recommended due to their proven long-term benefits. This is how I would go about it. Step zero, create a positive cash flow. Before we start investing, we need to have money to invest. Step zero, creating positive cash flow is the prerequisite. This seems to be obvious, but it's a vital first step. There are two levers you can use to create positive cash flow. Number one, you can increase your income. And number two, you can decrease your spending. Let's talk about lever one, increasing your income. The more money you earn, the more money you can potentially invest. This could involve asking for a raise at work, seeking out higher paying job opportunities, starting a side hustle, or investing in your education to increase your future earning potential. And lever two, decrease your spending. It's equally important to spend less than you earn. This requires creating a budget and sticking to it, prioritizing needs over wants, and identifying areas where you can cut back. Remember, every dollar you save is a dollar you can invest towards your future. Here's what I would do. This is me in my 20s. Let's say I'm a software engineer who wants to invest. I currently have $700 a month in surplus to invest, but I want to have more, obviously. To increase my positive cash flow, I would invest in improving my skill set. And next, I'd negotiate a 10% raise in my job. I would also do some freelance work on the side, and this would increase my income by an additional $1,500 per month. And at the same time, I would work on managing my expenses. I would cancel unused streaming subscriptions. I really don't need four streaming subscriptions at a time. And I will dine out a little bit less, reducing my expenses by about $300 per month. I now have an extra $1,800 per month to invest. So with the $700 I originally had plus $1,800, I now have $2,500 per month, which I can invest. Now let's go to step number one. Step number one is setting up an emergency fund. Once you have a positive cash flow, the next step is to establish an emergency fund. This fund serves as a financial safety net covering three to six months worth of living expenses. This is for unexpected life events like job loss, medical emergency, or major home repairs. Let's say my monthly expenses are around $4,000. I'm gonna create an emergency fund covering five months worth of expenses, $20,000. I'll save the first 12,000 of my free cash flow and put it into a high yield savings account where I can quickly access the money if I need it. Currently, I can get between four to 5% interest in an online savings account. That's a three month emergency fund. I would continue adding 50% of my free cash flow to the savings account until it reaches the $20,000 level, which is five months of emergency. Now, step number two, take advantage of employer matching retirement plans. Once you have secured your emergency fund or partially secured with three months, the next step is to start investing for retirement. If your employer offers a matching contribution to a 401k or similar retirement plan, make sure you're taking full advantage of it. This essentially gives you free money towards retirement. Aim to contribute at least the maximum amount that your employer will match. In my case, my employer offered a 50% match on the first 6% of salary that I contributed to the 401k. If I earned $100,000 per year, I would contribute the full amount, 6% or $6,000. That is $500 per month. And my employer would contribute the matching contribution of $3,000, which is 50% of the 6,000. Automatically, I'm getting a 50% return on investment. Yes, for out of the matching contribution of my employer. And I would set it to invest automatically into the total US stock market fund and the total international index fund at a 80-20 mix. Step number three, pay off high interest debt. Debt can be a significant barrier to building wealth. High interest debt, like credit cards debt, can quickly eat into your potential investment returns. Paying off 
this debt is akin to getting a guaranteed return on investment because you're saving on future interest costs. Once this is managed, you'll have more money available to invest. For example, if I had $10,000 balance in a credit card that charges me 20% annual interest, I'm paying $2,000 worth of interest per year. By diverting my extra cash flow towards paying down this debt, it would be the same as if I were investing at a 20% rate of return. I would save those $2,000 that is going out from my pocket every year. Step four, diversify investments with tax advantaged accounts. After taking care of high interest debt, the next investment should be a tax advantaged account like a Roth or traditional IRAs, individual retirement accounts, if you pay taxes in the United States, or a similar tax advantaged accounts if you are not a US taxpayer. These accounts are offered tax benefits that can significantly enhance your investment returns over time. The type of IRA that's best for you will depend on factors such as your income, tax filing status, and financial goals. In my case, I opened a Roth IRA and contributed the maximum amount annually, which currently is $6,500 per year. The money I contribute to the Roth IRA will grow tax-free and I will be able to withdraw it tax-free after the age of 59 and a half. Step five, invest in a diversified portfolio. At this stage, you should have secured an emergency fund, have a tax advantage employer matching account, paid off high interest debt, and started investing in tax advantage retirement accounts. Now you can invest in a regular taxable portfolio. It should be a diversified portfolio that may include stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or exchange traded funds. Diversification helps to spread risk and potentially increase returns over the long term. I would invest the remainder of my monthly surplus into a diversified portfolio. My allocation would be as follows. 60% in a low cost total US stock index fund like Vanguard's ticker VTI, 20% in a total international stock index fund, ticker VXUS, and 10% in a real estate investment trust, ticker VNQ. Oh, and I will, would also add 10% in a US small cap value fund, ticker VVR. Step six, keep building wealth and rebalance regularly. Continue to build wealth by regularly contributing to your investments. This is where the magic of compound interest comes into play. The more you invest and the earlier you start, the more time your money has to grow. Regularly review and rebalance your portfolio to ensure it aligns with your investment goals and risk tolerance. I rebalance my accounts once a year. So there you have it. By being strategic and disciplined about investing, you can build a solid financial foundation for the future. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Take care.